There's a lot of research conveying mindfulness meditation's impact upon psychological well-being. Consequently, a growing number of mental health professionals are applying this technique to treatment protocol. Yet despite the recent research regarding positive outcomes, specific mechanisms associated with mindfulness and well-being are unclear. A more precise look at these mechanisms is important in helping to create profiles of those populations most likely to benefit from mindfulness meditation in clinical settings. There are many reasons that explain why the mechanisms are somewhat elusive, including the ambiguity in the way mindfulness is operationalized, used, and researched across studies. These reasons are parsed out in much more depth in my paper. Despite the limitations in elucidating the mechanisms of mindfulness, many research studies seem to indicate that cultivating different aspects of attention is a feasible and consistent starting point bridging mindfulness practice and psychological well-being. The question remains as to how. This review paper supports a previously suggested idea that cultivating all aspects of attention through mindfulness leads to greater well-being by decreasing rumination. First, I'm going to talk about attention, then later on I will define rumination and eventually describe how the regulation of attention decreases rumination. Like mindfulness meditation itself, attention is not easily defined. Over two decades ago, researchers conveyed a conceptualization of attention as a multifaceted construct made up of the three unique and differentiated yet overlapping networks called alerting, orienting, and executive attention, the latter of which includes regulatory processes. Attention is also described in terms of the way it's regulated. In fact, meditation practices are usually described by the degree to which they entail focused attention and receptive attention. Although sometimes likened specifically to receptive attention, or RA, mindfulness practice is distinguishable by its utilization of both FA, focused attention, and RA. Here's what I mean when I say focused attention. When our attention is focused, it is restricted to a specific object which is commonly the neutral experience of the breath going in and the breath going out. Ideally, attention is sustained, but as thoughts and or feelings and or physical sensations arise, a conflict is presented. Different stimuli are now pulling for attention. Here's what this might look like if I was in session with the patient. And I want you to focus your attention so that you focus on the inhale and then the exhale of the breath. Good. I want you to notice the sensation as you breathe in and as you breathe out. After consistent practice, there's often less need for a specific object of focus. And we broaden the focus of our attention so that it is receptive to our entire field of awareness, including whatever thoughts, feelings, and sensations arise in the moment. Continue to breathe, of course, but try and broaden your awareness so that your attention is receptive to everything that comes up, any thought, any feeling, any sensation. Now I want to take a minute to talk about rumination. Rumination has been defined as the passive dwelling upon negative thoughts and or emotions and is negatively correlated with aspects of psychological well-being. Let me explain further. As aforementioned, early on in one's mindfulness meditation practice when it entails focused attention, attention is sustained on the neutral sensation of the breath. While the skill is being cultivated, ruminative thought processes likely interrupt the effort to sustain this attention. The ability to switch attention, however, ensures that one is constantly distracting oneself from ruminative thoughts via redirection of attention from rumination back to the breath. In the long term, avoiding and pushing away thoughts through distraction is as inefficient as clinging to them via rumination. Mindfulness meditation utilizes the benefits of distraction, but then goes beyond it in cultivating psychological well-being. When mindfulness meditation entails receptive attention, attentional focus is broadened and one is encouraged to be aware of all experiences. This allows for space to actually notice patterns of over-engagement in negative thoughts 
as opposed to suppressing them. The ability to cultivate a broader range of awareness also cultivates the ability to decenter, an executive attention tool, which allows for a stepping back from any possible secondary elaboration of ruminative thoughts. This means that thoughts can be non-judgmentally accepted as just thoughts that come and go. When thoughts are seen as transient, one is more likely to feel disconnected from them. The idea inherent in both distraction and decentering is that a shift is taking place. During the former, one's ability to distract and redirect attention away from rumination and to sustain attention on the neutral cessation of the breath is a literal shift in attention that cultivates regulatory processes intrinsic to psychological well-being. During the latter, one has the opportunity to figuratively shift attention from the content of a thought toward the process of having one. That vantage point allows for a more objective and less judgmental perspective. This perspective is more adaptive and reflected in greater psychological well-being. Ultimately, engaging in mindfulness meditation cultivates our ability to both focus and broaden our attention, which is a practical way to elicit psychological well-being.